Pakistan's ousted Prime Minister Imran Khan has been caught in a political storm for the past several weeks. Earlier this month, he was arrested by paramilitary forces on corruption charges, released only after the Supreme Court stepped in. His arrest triggered widespread protests across that country, followed by thousands of arrests and a massive crackdown on his political party known as PTI. When Khan was elected in 2018, he had the support of Pakistan's military. But Khan was removed in a no-confidence vote last year when he started criticizing the army leadership. He spoke to us early today from his residence in Lahore. I asked him what the last few weeks have been like as he's been the target of the country's government. Right now, the situation is such that all my senior leadership is in jail. Today, one person who was hiding was the president of my party. They grabbed him and they put him in jail too. So over 10,000 of my workers are in jail. I'm pretty isolated here right now. My security, remember the interior ministry has said that my life is in danger, extreme danger. And yet they picked up my head of security and he's disappeared for the last three days. And my bulletproof cars which accompany me, they've empowered two of them. So the situation is such I'm isolated, quite insecure. Uh, all my senior leadership in jail, or they have told them that, look, anyone who wants to come out, he has to renounce his membership of my party. You are facing criticism from all sides that uh, your supporters were responsible for violence after uh, they laid siege to uh, military buildings. Did they go too far? Should you have done more? Could you have done more to stop them? Well, firstly, I didn't even know what was going on because I was thrown into jail. So four days, I had no idea what was, I was cut off, no news, no mobile phone, nothing to know what was happening. Uh, the first I found out was when I was presented in the Supreme Court. And that's when the, when the judge asked me, and I said, for 27 years I've been in politics. We have never broken the law. We have always stayed within the Constitution. All our protests have been peaceful, which a political party is right. It's our right to protest peacefully. So what happened on this day, I have asked for an independent inquiry. The Supreme Court must hold an independent inquiry. We feel the arson was deliberately done. It was, we feel that it was like Hitler in 1933, used the arson on the German parliament as a means to crack down on the communists and he eliminated them. You're saying it wasn't your supporters who were responsible for the arson? Well, the, you know, there are CCTV cameras. There should have been a proper investigation. How can you be judge, jury, and executioner and then go after the whole party? So 10,000 of your workers who had nothing to do with arson. There were only a few hundred people who possibly were involved. So this is an excuse really to go after the party. The army has said that those responsible for the violence will be tried under military law. The proceedings are held in military courts, on military installations. Uh, the courts are run by military officers. Do you believe that your supporters can get a fair hearing in that sort of environment? This is the end of our democracy. In fact, it's the end of our justice system. It means there is no confidence in Pakistan's judiciary. How will the Supreme Court allow this to happen? We are now standing on the brink where the entire democratic structure is being dismantled. And the final nail in the coffin of the democratic structure will be military courts. Pakistan has been directly ruled by the military for almost half its modern history. And most prime ministers, including you, uh, came to power with the support of the military. How did you end up losing their backing? I think you need to ask the ex-army chief because he gave a statement afterwards that yes, he, had, he was involved in toppling my government and because he thought I was a danger to the country. And yet I worked with them. So what made him suddenly in the last six months decided to pull the rug under the feet of my government? What made him change horses and bring the, the setup? Only he can answer. At this point, do you want to curtail the army's power or do you wish the generals would support you as they did before? No. The problem is the hybrid system where the prime minister is supposed to have the responsibility as an elected prime minister. But the power 
is uh, basically lying with the establishment, military establishment. This hybrid system has failed. In my opinion, there needs to be a new equi equilibrium. The elected prime minister who has the responsibility must have the authority in any management system. So in order for Pakistan to get out of this economic mess, Pakistan's need rule of law. Rule of law will ensure proper governance. Are you confident that the next election will happen by October as scheduled? Absolutely not. I'm not confident. Because what is happening now is that the establishment, along with the, this current government, they are trying to crush the party. They are trying to ensure that PTI, my party, will not win. And so there are 150 cases slapped on me. And what they are hoping is that either I'll be in jail by then, and most of my leadership, they will try and turn, like they're saying, like some of our senior leaders who were in jail came out and said that, look, we are no longer part of the party because that was the condition they could come out of jail and all charges be dropped. So either the party will be so weak that it will not be able to win the elections. The only way elections will be if PTI cannot come into power. And that's why if by October it, this, it's not the case, they feel that PTI will still win, I don't think there will be elections. What role should the U.S. take in this situation, if at all? In the past, you've criticized the U.S. for interfering in your country's affairs. Countries have to solve their problems from within. But all we, I want the U.S. to say is what their professed values are all over the world, where they, where they say we stand with democracy, rule of law, constitutionalism, fundamental rights against custodial torture. That's all we want them to say. You know, when they speak about China or Russia or, or Hong Kong, they talk about all these things. Well, here is a classic example that the democracy is being rolled back and all these things are happening. So I think that's what, where, uh, where they should be consistent. Do you see a peaceful or negotiated way out of this situation? Possible. I think uh, we have reached an impasse because despite doing everything, the party's popularity has just grown. I mean, the latest report is it's 70% rating in Pakistan. It's unheard of in our history. So will they keep on on this course of trying to crush a popular political party? Or will they sit down and work out on some sort of a settlement? I think at some point, sense will prevail. I'm an optimistic, and I think then we would come to some sort of an understanding. Imran Khan is the former prime minister of Pakistan. Thank you so much for your time. My pleasure.